here in Wisconsin with Kevin Ham. We've got a red maple to remove here. Should be relatively straightforward. We've got the GRCS set up. We've got this whole half is declining and dead. And it's one of those things that you just cut the dead half out, you leave this and now it's fully exposed to the wind. It's hanging over the house. So even though this section is alive, now you've also made this giant wound by cutting that. So the trees, we're just gonna cut it down. The woman here, she loves her trees and she has a beautiful forest. Really cool to see these deciduous forests. You know, I'm used to evergreen ones. It's really cool to see this. A number of years ago, they, uh, one of Kevin's guys cut down the wrong tree here. And, um, well, maybe I'll just let her tell a story about that. Uh, Kevin and I met and looked at a tr an oak that was dead. And we decided that it should come down, and but we decided we'd do it in the winter. And so that winter, that following winter, um, you know, just waiting to find out when he was gonna cut that. They, they called him, they said it was gonna be um, whenever I don't it, but they didn't give me a precise date so I knew it was gonna it was coming up but I didn't know when well I came home from work one night and it was dark back in the days of voicemails or like answering machines and I walked in I saw I had a message I took it and it said it was not Kevin it was one of his guys and he said uh, we want to know what you want us to do with this wood because there's a lot more than we thought there would be. And so, you know, it's dark. And I get ready to call him back and I walk outside. I'm like, I call him back and I'm like, but you didn't cut the tree yet. And he said, oh yeah, it's we got it down and the wood's all gone. And I walked around the corner and I saw, and I said, you cut the, the wrong tree. <laughs> and I, I mean, I was just... Yeah panicked you know and he said no he said he said the one in the front I was like don't tell me you cut the wrong tree and and I said you have to have Kevin call me so I mean I was just so devastated it was a 150 year old oak and really a prime a, a, in a prime location it was the my favorite tree in the woods um, because it was right outside my big windows and <laughs> I have gardens all around it so um so Kevin called, of course, he was devastated too. I mean, the, is there a worse mistake that you could make as an arborist than cut a 150-year-old wrong tree? So um, so he came and he, uh, he was really upset and I was so impressed with the way he handled it. He didn't you know, try to m minimize it or anything. He took total responsibility for it. And he said, I'm gonna use a MacArthur quote. He said, it's not you give directions that can be understood, you give directions that can't be misunderstood. And that's, of course, what he did when he said, cut the oak in the front. So um, Kevin said, you know, I'm gonna make this right. And of course, he, he, um, the insurance paid for it, his insurance paid for the value of the tree. And then Kevin then came later and cut the correct tree for free. <laughs> And, and cut it up and um, stacked it even, which wasn't part of the original quote, of course. Um, but so he did that. And then he said he was gonna plant another oak. Um, but then we started thinking, my son was here from New Hampshire and we, my daughter and from Chicago, we were looking at it and you know, sort of commiserating about the lost tree. And then we decided it would be foolish to plant another oak because I'm, I'm not, old, but I'm sort of old. I'm not going to live 150 years <laughs> to see a tree replaced. And that's when we decided to come up with the, the idea of the birch. And so we did the, the, you know, the birch clump, which then changed the whole look of everything, but it really is so pretty. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So Kevin did what he could and he was, I mean, he couldn't have, he couldn't have uh, behaved better about the way that he made it as right as he could. Yeah, and now we're doing another tree for you today, so. <laughs> oh yeah, and I've had him so, do stuff since then, yeah. along a lot of stuff before that. I mean, I really do trust him. And, you know, it really, it, it was so good the way he handled that, 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 you know, I still have confidence in him. And he's a smart arborist. He does good work. That's awesome. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for, uh, yeah, for wanting to know. <laughs> Hey, 
Jacob. Yeah. You take off those lower branches below that main first crotch up there on the dead spar. We can send that spar right out here. If we take the lower branches off? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Like the top and all? Top and all. It'll, it'll sweep through. Those will kind of bust off there. Okay. Okay, I'll just kind of go skinny everything up. Can I cut this ash down? Yeah, you can. I was gonna say, it's probably not too... Uh, I think my bar is long enough for this tree. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> GRCS serial number four. Dude, we got a cable up there. Oh. oh yeah, oh yeah, by the way, there's a cable up there. Yeah, just can't, can't get away from the cabling. I went up, a big co-dominant fur, I went up just past where it was. It was like 100 feet above me and I notched it to drop it in this green belt. It was pounding wedges and it wouldn't go and I climbed up and it was cabled. And I didn't have any bolt cutters so I had to use a file, a round oh, file wow. to get through the cable and then snap and it went over. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was, it was. We'll cut the cable first. Yeah, we won't do that. <laughs> but even in retrospect, I would have done the same thing. I wouldn't have climbed all the way up to yeah. see if it was cabled. It was like way up there and you couldn't see it. Right. You could, I mean, this will be, it's extremely bark there, so you're getting a good union. Oh, okay. Uh, you can see there's kind of a bark there. Yeah. My first red maple. I've done crimson maples back home, but they're they're different than this. Oh yeah. Neat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this thing is ripe. I'm gonna run quick and buy a helmet and get back here. Oh wow! Because the, the truck, the truck's delayed. Wow. Okay. So we'll keep this going. Uh, Brandon will be here rigging for you. All right. Well, I'm gonna whittle away for a few minutes and then I'll ask for a block. for a block here. Hoist the sail! Alright. Okay, I'm gonna lower this down to the ground. And I'm gonna come back down and start just working my way up. Aye! That's funny, Kevin had to run to go buy a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 
<laughs> Kevin took my minivan. I'm lost without it. How did we end up with so few people on this job site? <laughs> How did we end up with just you and me? Shiver me timbers! I'm ready when you are. Set sail, mate! <laughs> Look at you, a new man. Man, 80 bucks I gotta pay for this beauty. <laughs> hey, I, I got GoPro stickies in my yeah, bag if you want. Protoss is here in about 15 minutes. Oh, really? Yeah. This is all for nothing? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> now I'll get some brush drag for you. Yeah, you look like a real, a real ground guy now. I feel like we started the week out with a lot of guys and every day we have fewer and fewer yeah, guys. guys every day, yeah. I feel like it's, I'm gonna be working by myself tomorrow. I just made it you're, look like we had <laughs> You're gonna have me grinding stumps alone tomorrow, huh? You ready? <laughs> Oh, my plate fell off. There's a plate that hold, it protects the underside of my saw. It's an aftermarket part. You see it right there, that orange thing? Find the treasure. Oh, I see. Yeah, I remember when John put that on, he's like, I think these screws are long enough. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't long enough. I didn't find the screws. <laughs> <laughs> Can you look? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just looking to snow here. So like if, if so if you guys drop anything all winter basically it's yeah. just a lost cause. Pretty small. <laughs>
figure about there at the block. Blimey! Hold on, this might be a good thumbnail. <laughs> yeah, hold on, I gotta get a picture of this. This, is, this looks really dumb. Hoist the sail! No, don't do anything. I got it right where I want it. I got it right where I want it. For this picture. Blimey! Hard not to cut my chain. <laughs> Just like it's free. Hold on. Textbook. <laughs> oh yeah, stretch the chain a little bit, but we're good. I don't have a scrunch. Maybe you guys could just, just tighten it just a smidge. There you go. Yeah, let's go ahead and lower that down. Yo ho ho! And uh, I need my saw tightened a little bit before I get that back. Arr, matey! I don't know how everybody in Wisconsin isn't 500 pounds. All the cheese you guys eat. So much treasure! And all the awesome stuff they have at Quick Trip. So much booty! This dead one, it's got some funky mushrooms on it. Fire! Crank it. Hoist the sail! There we go. Walk the plank!
On the back side, I can take whatever you want off. Uh. Off with his head! So you just switched? So you just switched? Okay, I'll, I'll just switch same time then. Now it's recording. Okay, now I'm recording. So, yeah, I'll take the pole line. Yeah. Find that. I thought I brought one out here. Yes, I did. We're not even gonna need much pull. We got a machine too. Yes, we do. There's a quick hitch on there so you don't have to uh, drop it. I like the slippery sheet fin. Yeah. The only knot that anybody knows in Washington seems to be the slip knot. Everything comes up to you on a slip knot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess I am dealing with a master ibris. So. <laughs> and you're also dealing with a climber who had all kinds of configurations sent up to him. Yeah, I know. That's whenever you're working with a new crew and you ask for something, you, it's always like a mystery <laughs> what it's going to come up like. Yeah, it's like, what? Hey, you know what's perfect? Is that this thing is cabled. I was able to finish my cabling video up here. Yeah, that's awesome. We got it get a cable cutter up here for him. You know, it, it seems like the Husky guys are kind of like, oh, you know, Husky steel, you know, it just really matters about your dealer. But the steel guys are like, man, steel all the way. So absurd. People get all caught up on. It. I mean, there are two. There are two manufacturers that make chainsaws, guys. But like, you really think one of them is going to be horrible saws? I think it depends on the model. I think the model matters. Yeah. They both make good saws. I'm going to cut my notch. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's let's save that one. I'll direct message you with this, Jake. What? I'll direct message you with this. But that's okay. <laughs> I don't need it. I got tons of pictures, you know. Alright, I'm ready when you are. Uh, are you taking the whole top? Yeah. Hey, hey, is it, have you notched it yet, Jacob? Yeah, I'm not. I'm ready to go. Okay, where, where is it going? Straight off or? It's like straight, straight towards that tree that it might hang up in. Okay. Right over the block, right here. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll watch it. Okay, you feel good? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. I can't hear you, are you ready? I am ready. It's looking easier now, Jacob. Oh yeah. You had no idea what you were gonna learn when you came here, did you? I, I learned about I learned about wind chill yesterday. Yeah, Kevin was like, yeah, you can walk on that lake. And I walked out about six feet and I came back. It's like, no, you can't walk on it. It's it's breaking. <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, that's not gonna. Yeah, then I saw your video and I went, oh, I didn't know it was like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, I really shouldn't have told him to go out there. <laughs> it, it was like 10 inches thick where he was. I didn't know that it popped and crackled when you walked on it. All right, were you, uh... Oh, I'm done with this. Yeah, yeah. You can untie that and hold on to one side and send it. Okay, you ready? Yeah.
Rope out. need much of a snap on those it can be about a half inch thick and then just overlap it about about a half inch and just break her loose <laughs> I guess this is pretty crooked. Yeah, it's it's not gonna land nice. Yeah, okay. We'll guess, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take the bolt cutters. Haven't you heard my uh, famous saying? Jacob? It must not be that famous. It must not, you didn't even respond. <laughs> Cause I never heard it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a short trunk. <laughs> yeah, that could be used in a lot of ways. I remember my friend, uh, my friend telling me a story, he was, they rigged down this huge, you know, 30 inch or better diameter oak tree in this very posh yard on Lake Mendota in Madison. And he's on the trunk and he's down, you know, he's coming down. They're like, yo, you want to take a couple more rigs? No, no, it, it fits. And he's like, sure, I'm, I'm right here. No, no, it fits. So he comes down and he's like a contract climber. So he's working for another company and he's standing next to the homeowner as they tip over this massive trunk that just craters the lawn. It just like, and the face of the homeowner just like sank. He says, there we were, we masterfully rigged this thing down. And then, no, no, we got it. And they just cratered the lawn. It's like nothing wrong with a short trunk. So before I, you notice I, I'm talking to my GoPro. So before I cut this uh, cable, I, I took all the weight out as much as I could because when you put the cable in, the tree grows with you know the cable supporting it. So it really becomes part of the structural integrity of the tree. So getting that weight off. I mean, this, this thing was this thing was actually uh, taut when I started, and now it's floppy. It would have cut a lot easier, taut. <laughs> That's true. Ugh. Maybe way too easy. I've heard some stories about that. Really? People cutting the cables and... And then it, it fails? It makes sense. It makes perfect sense. I've heard of studies where they, they grow trees indoors. There's some like greenhouse somewhere, nursery. They were growing a bunch of these conifers indoors and they kept falling over and they couldn't figure out why. And it was because they didn't weren't exposed to any wind. Yeah. So the roots didn't develop. Yeah, John says he's not taking any more customers. Oh really? You messaged him? No, I heard him on a on a. Uh, well, yeah, I did. But it, but when I asked him that, it was about redoing the the two hundred one T, and he doesn't want to redo. He only wants to do new saws. Yeah, nobody wants to do it. Yeah. No, the, the problem with the problem with building saws as a saw builder is you can't hire anybody to help you because as soon as you train them, there's no reason they would build saws for you. They just build saws themselves, you know? Right. <laughs>
terug. A 572 would be good for these because we had a felum at like four feet. We got to put a couple lines in a couple different directions. Hey, you think that's good, Kevin? Yeah, I think so. Let me give you a line. want to notch this one first out of the way sure do you want to you want to cut one and i cut one okay that way we wouldn't have to do paper scissors rock which we never do around here historically i they, i give the climber who climbed the tree the option if he wants to own the tree that's polite that's that's yeah, august and damien they really get into the rock the psychology behind rock paper scissors oh, oh, yeah <laughs> There's a science to it. It's like, <laughs> like isn't it just August three is like three August options. is like reading the stats on it. Yeah, yeah. He made that video and he's like doing animations. Like yeah. he's thinking paper, so he's gonna do rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it. Which side do you want to do? I'll take the small side. You sure? You want to do the first one? Now do we have to flip for it? No, I just give you the option. Yeah, I'll, I'll take this. I'll take this. I'll take this one out of the way. Okay. And then uh, I'll send that one. So I'll, I've got the big one tied off. So I'll run this down there and flop it out. Okay.
chime in here. So unfortunately right here, Kevin cut his hinge wood. And unfortunately for my friend Kevin, I'm gonna have to talk about this for a second because this is actually a really good example of what happens when you cut your hinge wood. You can see that the tree, you know, it has a directional face in it towards the woods, towards the machine, pulling with a rope on it. And you can see that because he cuts off the right side of his hinge, you see this tree fall exactly where it leans. Luckily, the tree was short enough where it didn't smash those trees and everything turned out fine. You know, this, uh, it wasn't a good cut, but it could have been a lot worse. There, there weren't really any targets and that's why we cut it so low, brought the stem down so far, but you can really see how the directional control, and, and you'll see on the next one, I'll, I'll just tell you, I don't cut through my hinge and you can see that the tree falls in the direction of the hinge but when you cut that wood off that hinge wood is what's controlling and slowly lowering the tree down to the ground and you know when you cut it off you're really just sort of at the mercy of gravity so i, I just kind of felt like i had to talk about this i'm not trying to throw kevin under the bus he's a very good arborist i mean he's a master arborist he, he really knows what he's doing but uh I've done this like a million times. We we all have guys who cut trees. So it was an awkward cut. It was awkward for him. He was like reaching over his head and it was a, you know, the, the, the trunks are kind of sandwiched into each other and he's not trying to cut the one on the right. But just a really good example, what happens when you cut your holding wood. When you cut your holding wood, the tree just falls wherever it leans. And you can see even with pulling it with that mini skid, it sort of went in the direction of the face cut, but not really. It, it pretty much fell exactly where it leans. Cut the back side of the hinge. You think of the short? Yeah, I, my bar dipped over there. I was wondering why it was heading that way. Yeah. And it was weighted that way, so that was a critical error. I should have used the. Uh, I should have used the. Uh, the shorter bar. I think I'll bike. Cut it low. You want me to cut this side off so you got more uh, more to work than you can cut? I, I could I, rip this right down. I think if I cut or it just low, cut the whole thing and I think I'll, I think I'll just cut it really low. Yeah. See what value a short trunk did for us? Right. Glad I brought it down further. That's a really awkward cut. Yeah, I should have had a shorter bar. So you're, because they're not holding it way back. Holding the way up and then. Because I'm looking at that, like I can either cut it up high or cut it down low. And it's yeah. it's like, even though it's bigger, it's easier to, to cut it low than yeah. trying to reach up, you know? So nice. Oh, he brought the big one. I might be getting hot. I might, <laughs> I'm going to be running that bad boy. Finally! Boat. I'm going to feel the Wisconsin, Wisconsin heat. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not even above freezing, folks. Turn it into a Wisconsinite. Midwest style.
Man, that thing disintegrated. I, I tried to do it like a Wisconsinite, but I just I just can't cut on that shallow. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job. <laughs> Thanks, but you know, yeah, that I definitely sleep better with that. Look at that. Look at all that decay in there. Yeah. Even though beside that. Oh, that no. Yeah, that I'm just saying I, I'd sleep way better that. without that tree next to your house. Yes. Oh my gosh. So all right. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know one thing I noticed, Kevin? You smiled the whole time. I was smiling? Yeah, when you're walking so, around, pulling, oh. you're just well, smiling good. the whole time. Good. Everybody yeah. says I like scowl. Oh, really? Or maybe yeah. I mistook your scowl for a smile. He still likes, he still likes yeah, his job. Good. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's good. Maybe, maybe I'm getting better with age. <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> yeah, so you know how you were talking here. about quick trips yeah. earlier? Yeah. Did you try Culver's yet? Yeah, I did oh, yeah. both I yesterday. I Culver's last night. A Culver's and quick trip yesterday. It was epic. I got the yeah. cheese curds, you know. Same. I see. I see what the hype is about with Quick yeah. Trip. I definitely get it. Good job, man. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> Thanks for letting me interview you. Oh, it was fun. It was good to meet you. Have a good time. Yeah, yeah, very nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. It was really nice to. Yeah. <laughs> Probably wrapping this video up. Hey, nice job, Kevin. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. Just don't listen I, to what I, I say. <laughs> <laughs> you did an awesome job, man. Thank you. What nice you job, man. Yeah, you too. Yeah, nice job, man. Thank you. All right, that's a pretty big stump. That's a pig of a saw. That thing is really heavy. It's just like the 88, but yeah, this tree's done. Pretty nasty hollow inside. Seems like all the trees we cut down are hollow inside. But yeah, that's it for this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out Kevin's channel, Game of Trees. You can support this show on Patreon if you'd like. I'd appreciate it. You can get some merch on my website. You can get my coffee at backwardsgrinds.com slash treason. And thanks for watching. See ya.